and she believes me. All right, hold on. We'll get you up in a minute, sister. What a sinner, what a sinner. We're in Condante. You guys see it? La 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 la, Condante. The little sad. And on he went And she has faith in me. Shut up. We want to hear you, buddy. Everyone good? All right. This I have to do because the sister was waiting. I hadn't seen her. Like Joe Witness, she has got questions. Not fresh. Still bloated, people. Sitting in a car five hours. Recurring cheat day, so I'm bloated. Hopefully, I'll look leaner this week. Glory to the Father, Sister. All right. May the Father be glorified. The Son be glorified. The Holy Spirit be glorified. We ask the Holy Spirit to be our teacher. And I be his mouthpiece. May the Holy Spirit own this ministry the channels, shut the door of censorship. May he purge us in his purifying fire. Wash all of us in blood of Jesus Christ. Please, Holy Spirit, do that for my daughters, even their mother, our loved ones. Bless this lady. Strengthen me to recall every jot to the poor scripture. Perfectly, accurately, save me from error. Correct my errors. Destroy our sin. And help me, Holy Spirit. Help us all. Perfect, strict discipline, spiritually and physically. And enable me. Set me free from my bondages, enslave us to you, Holy Spirit, to the Son, to the Father. Enslave this young lady to the true Father, the true Son, Lord Jesus Christ, to you, Holy Spirit. Fill us with your fruit, crucify our flesh, destroy the fruits of our flesh, conquer Satan by the blood of Jesus Christ, and help me to keep this weight off and be healthy for the glory of the Lord and holy unto the Lord, and set us free. Beatify us with the beauty of Jesus Christ. Make my voice pleasing to the ears of your servants, and grant me the strength in my throat, my lungs, my heart, my arteries, my chest, <clears throat> to be used by you to glorify Jesus Christ. Bless the church. Rebuke demons and false teachers and crush their filthy mouths and teach them the fear of the Lord. Make us bold even unto death. Destroy every form of blasphemy, idolatry, to never deny or betray or shame Jesus Christ our Lord. We need your Holy Spirit. And help me to go higher, all of us to go higher. Help me in these <clears throat> vices to overcome them. Keep me pure until marriage, until the Lord summons me and enable me to die to these bondages, to, to go to a higher level of health and holiness. And all of us and this young lady, user for the glory of Christ, strengthen us, Holy Spirit. We need you. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, both now and forever, unto ages of ages. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Beatify us, Holy Spirit, for the glory of Jesus Christ. Destroy our pride, arrogance, ego. Destroy our fake piety, fake humility, fake humbleness. Purge our motives and grant us the greatest gifts. Perfect faith in our God. Hope in our God. Perfect love for our God. And heal me. Purge us. Heal us. Purge me. To be pure for the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to the Father and the Spirit. Now, before I bring up sister, I just want to share something. And he I just want to share two things. One of my mods, Romeo, has a YouTube channel. Please subscribe to it. Support that brother for the glory of Jesus Christ. Now, before I do this, I want to do this. I want to get rid of the Count Dante, the legend. Yeah, he's a fake. Bruce Lee. Was real. Come on. Yeah. Lord to the Father, Holy Spirit. Rebuke Satan, Father. Rebuke Satan, Lord Jesus Christ. Rebuke Satan, Holy Spirit. All right. I want to show you this. This was funny. Look at this right here. What the heck is this? Rare snapshot. Rare snapshot of Chuck Norris arriving to kindergarten after dropping off his parents at work. What the hell? What is this, man? What the hell? All right. Now, with that said, let me go back here. Now, let me share my brother's YouTube channel. I didn't know he's premiering this. Support these brothers, sisters, their YouTube channel. They're making the effort. All it takes is subscribe and also support. Like their videos for the glory of the Father, the Son, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit. So let's go here. He's premiering this now. So there it is. Right here, here's a YouTube channel. He's taking the clip that I did with that Muslim where he got rocked and we proved that they're pagans. So here you go. There you go. So he's there on his live stream. 
And she believes in me. Right here. Touching your verdict. So no resistance against your decision. Don't you shut up, man. Don't you talk over me, mister. So here it is. Support that brother. He's preparing. I didn't know he's premiering, but support them. Do your part. All it takes is subscribe and like. So there it is. Glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit, in Jesus' mighty name. All right. Don't you ever cut me off, mister. All right. Now I'm going to bring her up, but let me just get everything ready. All right, sister, you ready? You don't have to show your camera if you're okay with it. Are you okay with it? The camera on? Just put in private yes or no in the private chat. If you're okay, I'll bring you up. If not, you can turn off your camera. Romeo, I just shared your link. And I told them to go subscribe. All right, there she goes. Sorry. All right, there you go, sister. Right, we're, we're on, sister. You were there? Okay. All right. So tell us a little about your background. Um, so I grew up just being a Christian. And um, recently, just because of my in-laws, I was brought to uh, the Jehovah Witnesses, so the Kingdom Hall. And... Um, it just didn't really make a lot of sense to me, uh, primarily when they started saying that uh, Jesus was the Archangel Michael. It just didn't oh. make sense to me just at the first. And then uh, the memorial uh, it didn't really make sense a lot to me. And that's what got me to um, stop being part of them or trying to be part of them. Hmm. So your in-laws, meaning your husband is a Jehovah's Witness? I, uh, he's not active right now, but then his mom is and his brother, sister. Yeah. So what does he feel about, okay, now his family, they're devout Joe's witnesses. You're not. How does he feel about you not being, obviously you follow the true God now, right? I'm assuming. Yes. Um. So he respects what uh, I am doing, even though I do believe that man is, well, man is in charge. He's the head of the house. But he agrees with me that I am not going to be led to a different Jesus, and I I um, appreciate him for respecting it. We we don't do studies together, but he is at least respects that I don't believe their truth. Okay, so now in light of that, you've reached out to me because you wanted help to do what, so people understand the context. And then, by the way, guys, I do speak to people privately, but I do let them know <laughs> they can do it public. Now, why? I just want everyone to understand why. Because there are people who have the same questions to objections that they need answered and to reach various groups. So when I have someone, they're willing to come and they ask the same questions that others have. Now they get the answers. It's archived. So I don't have to repeat the same thing over again. So she, by coming on, is being a blessing to others because now they'll see the title. Oh, actual witness. And they're going to learn how to properly witness to the witnesses to bring them to the true god so thank you for that the spirit fill us for the glory of jesus christ but what do you want to do you reach out to me what's your intention um was because i got in contact with so i was trying to talk to my sister-in-law about the memorial and about the 144,000 they claim to be the anointed class part of the um governing body i guess and then she prompted me to talk to a elder so it's a married couple I met up with them and um, didn't really got anywhere. They just told me that if I kept reading the Bible by myself, I was not oh. going to get anywhere. Did, repeat that part. What did they say to you? They t they told me that I was not going to get anywhere if I kept reading the Bible if by myself. Now, let me explain what they really mean. One sign. Now, we have to be careful how we articulate this. It is true. It is true. God inspired the scriptures to be interpreted by leadership that he appointed, anointed, filled with the spirit, qualified by the spirit to interpret those scriptures. That is a fact. You'll find in Old Testament, the priesthood, New Testament, the apostles, but then the bishops. This is why, if we want to know the correct interpreted scripture, it is vitally important. We look at the ancient churches, go back and see how the disciples of the apostles those bishops, they appointed their followers and after them, preserve the scriptures, explain the scriptures, articulate the scriptures, defend the scriptures, even unto death. So there is truth in that because not everyone's qualified. But when you have modern movements that spring up centuries later, Joe's Witnesses started in the 1800s, Charles Taze Russell, the precursor, 19th century. 
And then they're telling you, we are God's organization on earth. You need us to explain scripture. Then you ask them, well, what happened with the Christians for the first 1700 years? You are not around. Your views were not around. They didn't get it right. God left them as orphans. This is why these cult groups teach. And I'm sure you heard this. They actually teach after the death of the last apostle John, the church went apostate. So from second century onwards, these Christians, these holy martyrs, they were not true Christians. They were heretics. Yep. The church went apostate and the Lord had to restore the church 1700 years later. Blasphemy. Is that what they taught you? Um. Yes. <laughs> That's what they told me. And it's just, and, and honestly, going through their magazines and going to the online like library, it just didn't make sense to me, Sam. I had to. I um, was protecting you. And he was, I was called apostate and I was like, am I an apostate just because I want to follow the Bible just as it is and how it's commended by Jesus Christ. Oh, and um, oh, I really didn't get anywhere. I actually brought them uh, Psalm uh, 102.25 and with Hebrews 1.10. Yeah, and it was talking to a wall, like to a brick wall. Precisely. They yeah, and they just told me they backfired saying that that Jesus was a, a created being, um, that it didn't apply to him. And um, I, that's when I was told that I was not going to get anywhere if I kept reading the Bible by myself, that I needed their studies and to meet with them. And I'm like, I, I'm not going to do this. <laughs> yeah, that's the brainwashing. So now let me explain to everyone, just because you will refute the Jehovah's Witnesses, that doesn't mean you're going to convince them. And that doesn't mean they will have eyes to see, but you got to do your part. Meaning mm -hmm. you trust the spirit to let you plant seeds or water seeds planted and let the spirit deal with them. Now, if you see you're getting nowhere, that means you need to stop. So mm -hmm. you see, they're not getting nowhere. And another thing just share with everyone, a Jehovah witness will not allow you to tell them what the scriptures mean, because how can you know you are part of apostate Christendom you're not part of the anointed class. Only the anointed class know the meaning of the Bible, and only they can teach it. So that's mm -hmm. why we have the watchtower. Yeah. So the most ineffective way of witnessing to witness is to tell them what a passage means. The most effective way is to ask them questions. Well, what do you do with this verse? Well, hold on. That's not what it says. It says this. So how do you do with that? Ask enough questions and then pull back and let the spirit work. Mm -hmm. That's how you witness to them. I know that because I used to go to the society their meetings and I saw I saw that in those meetings they were being trained how to communicate and not to communicate they even have classes on speech and they were telling the members you ask questions just ask questions enough questions to get them to think and you answer questions so I learned oh okay that's how you do it so with that said you know how to present the material by asking questions. Well, how can Jesus be this if the Bible says this? And ask enough questions, trust the Spirit then to convict them. And a lot of them, that's how it works. You plant enough of these verses in their mind that troubles mm -hmm. them, they leave by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, with that said, here's a question. Now, I don't know why the demons are manifesting in my comment section. Get them a lot here. I only want serious students. Here's the question. How do you want me to help you to make the most effective responses to the Joseph Witness? So you let me know because I'm going to go to their website. We're going to use their material. Um, so personally, I was trying to understand like mainly what these uh, who are these people from the uh, 144,000? Because uh, yeah. when I read Re uh, Revelation 14, 1 to 5, it says that um like mainly these uh, people didn't defile themselves with this themselves with women, uh, that they were called the first fruits of God. So um, those yeah, are they, the, those they'll are the say that's spiritual language. As you see, this is the problem with Revelation. Mm -hmm. The problem is a lot of the Bible, I should say Revelation, it's a apocalyptic literature. So there's a lot of symbolism. Mm -hmm. And so the symbols are pointing out to spiritual reality. So what they're going to tell you is, they are virgins. They didn't defi defile themselves with women, meaning they are spiritual virgins who didn't commit spiritual adultery with the beastly system. Mm -hmm. Now, I tend to agree with that interpretation, meaning it's very dangerous to pontificate and assume you've understood Revelation. So you have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. So what I see in Revelation is the 144,000, because you're referencing Revelation chapter 14, verses 1 to 5. But the first reference to it is Revelation 7. Three to eight, specifically four to eight. 
the context of Revelation is not defiling yourself with the beastly system, the whore of Babylon, mm -hmm. and getting drunk with her orgies and fornication. So it's talking about spiritual adultery. Keep yourself pure spiritually. So they have a case that it's spiritual virginity. So okay. I don't I don't have a problem with that being spiritual, that you don't defile yourself with the beastly system and become a spiritual adulterer. Because even in Revelation 2, 18 to 23, the Lord Jesus is condemning the church for tolerating a false prophetess, Jezebel, and committing adultery with her. Well, their adultery means spiritual adultery. There's two types of adultery, physical and spiritual. Why spiritual? Because God is your husband. So when you then love the world and the things of the world or follow gods and goddesses, you're committing spiritual adultery. Clear? Clear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's not the that's not the route I would go. You coming? I don't know if the cat wants to come. That's because you're dealing with a highly symbolic book. A lot of symbolism, a lot of metaphors, not a lot of similes, like the lamb with seven horns and seven eyes. Or se yeah. they, these are meant to point to spiritual reality. So it's why Revelation is the last book you want to go to mm -hmm. because you want to make sure you've understood the Bible thoroughly. And even then, you want to be careful and say, it may mean this, because there's a blessing and a curse. Blessing and a curse. On anyone who manhandles Revelation, you're cursed. Anyone who understands it, they're blessed. Okay. So the 144,000, obviously, they're not Jehovah's Witnesses. That's number one. Number two, if we read it at a surface level, I do believe these 144,000 is a number it may not be literally 144,000 because 144,000 is a number, a multiple of 12. Now, why is that important? Mm -hmm. Why is it a multiple of 12? Why is that important? Now, we're going to use their Bible. May the Spirit save me from error, correct my mistakes, and perfect our understanding truth and obey it to show our love for the Lord. Because they're taken from the 12 tribes of Israel. So 12 times... 12 is 144, right? Mm -hmm. So 12 times 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes. That's 144,000. In other words, it is the division, a multiplication of 12, so that you can take this to mean that God will save a complete, perfect remnant of Jews so that it may be the case that it is ethnic Israel. Now, why do I say it may be the case? Because in the same context... After mentioning 12,000 from the 12 tribes, it goes on to mention right after this. Here it is. We're going to use their translation, New World Translation. Mm -hmm. and you can see it on the screen, right? Yes. Yeah, Raphael, it's okay. Because I want to be artificial. All right, now here. Revelation 7, 4. Let me see if the screen is large enough here. They can see it. Because I want to run color. This is their channel. Yep, okay, here. Read with me. Follow. Help me help you. Please stay focused. And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000, sealed out of every tribe of the sons of Israel. Out of the 12, 12 out of the tribe of Judah, 12,000 sealed. Out of the tribe of Reuben, 12,000. Out of the tribe of Gad, 12,000. <clears throat> out of the tribe of Asher, 12,000. Out of the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000. Out of the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000. Out of the tribe of Simeon, 12,000. Out of the tribe of Levi, 12,000. Out of the tribe of Issachar, 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 12,000. Out of the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000. Out of the tribe of Joseph, 12,000. Out of the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000 sealed. Now, the reason why I believe that this is referring to ethnic Israel, because then it goes on to say, after this I saw. Now, some can say that what's coming in 9 to 17 is actually a clarification, an interpretation of who these Israelites are. Mm -hmm. spiritual Israelites, the nations who, because of their union with Christ, become Israelites. Now, the reason why I have a problem with that is because then why mention the tribes? Yeah. So I have a problem with this being spiritual. I may be wrong. Remember, we got to tread lightly, right? Mm -hmm. I may be wrong. So because I may be wrong, possibly, but I have a problem because if they're spiritual Israelites, I don't find anywhere in Scripture where we... Christians, because we're spiritual Israelites, were assigned to one of the tribes. So I take the mentioning of tribes that these are actual Jews, but the number may not be 144,000. That's simply symbolic. Right? Correct. Right. Now, 
if I go on reading, then I find that the people from all the other nations, tribes, and languages, right, are so numerous they can't be counted. So now this must be a different group, right? After this I saw, and look, a great crowd, mm -hmm. which no man was able to number, out of all nations, tribes, and peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. Now this group can't be numbered, and these are those redeemed from the nations, the rest of the nations, right? Mm -hmm. So I do, do believe, because of the context, these are talking about ethnic Jews. But if they are ethnic Jews, then it cannot be Joe's Witnesses, because... The Joe's Witnesses don't believe that all of the anointed class are ethnically Jewish, right? Right. Um, and also, Sam, uh, the husband told me from the couple of Jehovah Witnesses, he told me that they, these group couldn't be Jews because um, Jews uh, killed Jesus. And That's that it didn't true. make sense. No. And you, know you tell them? Say, hold on. But the first Christians, weren't they Jews? Wasn't Peter a Jew? Mm-hmm. Wasn't Paul a Jew? Thomas a Jew? What is it? What does that got to do with? Yes, some Jews instigated the death of Christ, not all Jews. And the first believers were all Jewish. What is this guy talking about? Yeah, I I was about to tell him where does in the Bible um you can uh, look to support that idea because it doesn't make sense to me at all. Yeah. No, so this man wasn't too educated because that is one of the stupidest arguments I've ever heard. Because mm -hmm. the first Christians were Jews. Peter, James, John, Thomas, Bartholomew, Philip, all Jews. Paul was a Jew. Mary was a Jewish woman. She was there after Christ went to heaven. She was in the church. So what are they talking about? Mm -hmm. In fact, if you read the book of Acts, what was shocking was for the Jews, they were shocked that Gentiles could be incorporated and be saved. Mm -hmm. Do you know that? If you read Acts chapter 10 and 11, Peter was hesitant to enter the house of Cornelius mm -hmm. because he's a Gentile and they don't want to come into contact with Gentiles because the food they ate would contaminate them mm -hmm. ritualistically. But the Holy Spirit said, don't hesitate, go. Then he had to explain to the Jews in Acts 11 why. And here, let me show you. So I don't know what this guy's talking about. That's wow. He's and he's been a member. He's been a member for a lot of years. I think he knows my. Um, so he wasn't an elder? I can't, I didn't ask him if he was an elder, but I'm pretty sure he could be one. All right. Well, for an elder, he should have known better, but here. Right, now, the beautiful thing about this is that they let you read. We can play it. They'll read the passage itself. So let's read. Here, Acts 11. Chapter 11. Now the apostles and the brothers who were in Judea heard that people of the nations had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter came up to Jerusalem... The supporters of circumcision began to criticize him, saying, You went into the house of men who were not circumcised and ate with them. You see, they're shocked, aren't they? Mm hmm See, so here are Jews saying, How could you enter the house of the Gentiles who are not circumcised and eat with them? You know, mm -hmm. that's forbidden. So what does he mean the Jews killed Jesus? The first Christians were Jews, and they were actually shocked that Gentiles could be saved, right? Mm hmm So now he's got to defend himself. At this, Peter went on to explain the matter in detail to them, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and while in a trance, I saw a vision, something descending like a great linen sheet being let down by its four corners from heaven, and it came right down to me. Looking closely into it, I observed four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, reptiles, and birds of heaven. I also heard a voice say to me, Get up, Peter, slaughter and eat. But I said, Certainly not, Lord, because a defiled or unclean thing has never entered my mouth. The second time, the voice from heaven answered, You stop calling defiled the things God has cleansed. This happened a third time, and everything was pulled up again into heaven. Also, just at that moment, Three men were standing at the house where we were staying, having been sent to me from Caesarea. Then the Spirit told me to go with them, not doubting at all. But these six brothers also went with me, and we entered into the house of the man. He reported to us how he saw the angel stand in his house and say, Send men to Joppa, and summon Simon, who is called Peter, 
and he will tell you things by which you and all your household may get saved. Watch their reaction. But when I started to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them, just as it did also on us in the beginning. At this, I recalled the saying of the Lord, how he used to say, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with Holy Spirit. If, therefore, God gave the same free gift to them that he gave to us who have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I should be able to hinder God? When they heard these things, they stopped objecting, and they glorified God, saying, So then, God has also granted to people of the nations repentance leading to life. There you go. You caught it? Mm -hmm. Verse 18. So what was shocking wasn't Jews believe in Jesus. They were shocked that Gentiles would be accepted and mm -hmm. given the same Holy Spirit that the Jews did through faith in Christ. So I don't know what he's talking about. But now we got that out of the way. The 144,000, I believe you can make a strong case, they're Jews. But regardless, if they're not, that still doesn't mean Joe's witnesses are right. So what does that got to do with Joe's witnesses? And not only that, the only 144,000 only started being formed when Charles Taze Russell arose? Or did God mm -hmm. not have his anointed class from the first century onwards? Too many issues, but that's, yeah, that doesn't yeah. work. Mm -hmm. So that's not going to work. What else did you need me to do? Because that's a terrible argument. Um. So that was my problem at first, just because I didn't want to. I didn't want to attend to the memorial. I had my reasons, and I just thought. I just told them that I didn't believe that Jehovah Witnesses or the government body was these people, these Jew. Um. Another. I think I didn't really have any arg like good arguments to, uh, to fight them back or just uh, plant the seed of... No, um, what you can say you is, think. look, even if they're not Jews, that doesn't mean it's you. Right, yeah. Right? And Yes, and so that ended there. We didn't really speak about these people. They said that it was not um, logical, that not to take a literal. Um, and... I agree with you that at least we know that these people at least were Jews. Um, another thing you that I was wrong, though, but don't remember, we're not adamant because we can't be adamant. We may be wrong. That still doesn't mean they're the anointed class. That has under. By the way, the memorial service for people who don't know that's when they celebrate the Lord's Supper supposedly, but they do it on Passover, Pascha, when the Jews celebrate Passover, and they will attend. If not a king, well, they'll run out of place. Now, you can confirm this because you would know this from your husband. Can you tell people that when they go there, they only pass the cup? And what else do they pass? Do you know about it? The wine and the bread. Yes. So the cup and the bread, right? Mm -hmm. Does anyone eat it or drink it? Nope. Uh, nobody does there. Yeah. And that's Say it again. Um, Say it so they, don't. Uh, they don't. Neither of them take partakes of the... Uh, bread or the wine did you guys hear it they only do the lord's supper once a year on passover pascha because that's when jesus did it and when they do it they only look at the bread and the cup they're not allowed to eat the bread or drink the cup unless they're part of the 144,000. right and i said there before like i've been in the memorial before when i started my relationship because i was open-minded till i actually got to know their actually doctrine and it didn't make sense to me. So I didn't went for the next one, which was last year. Um, and all this started, uh, the family just started to step away. Um, exactly. Calling me an apostate that yep. I... Well, did you get baptized in the Joe Witness Kingdom Hall? No. Mm -mm. So I'm kind of confused. I thought only baptized Joe's Witnesses can be called apostates. Why are they calling you no. an apostate? Maybe I'm wrong. Um, but and they were saying that I was called an apostate because I am not... Uh, when you refuse to believe in Jehovah, and I'm like, I am not refusing Jehovah, I'm just refusing your uh, point of view in Jesus Christ, and that He's just a creative being. Um, so that's when we went to solve. I actually also tried to uh fight the deity of Jesus Christ with Psalms 102 25 and the yeah. Hebrews 110, and um, it didn't really went well at all. I didn't so, have a good argument. Yeah, no, well, they didn't listen because you're arguing. You're arguing they're not going to listen. You got to ask questions.
but it's too late for you to be able to influence them because they, once you're deemed apostate, they will have nothing to do with you. So once you're labeled, for those of you who don't know, if they deem you apostate, they don't talk to you. They won't engage you. So you want to avoid that label as much as you can so you can at least ask questions to penetrate the armor. But for her, she's already labeled an apostate. So th they have no interest in listening to you because you don't know any better. Now, I don't know how it's going to affect the relationship with your husband, but be that as it may, until your husband officially leaves those witnesses, I guess there's still a door of communication between them and him, but not you, right? Mm, yeah. Um, the couple is still willing to talk to us because they want us to go to studies with them. And they don't want to lose the husband. Yeah. And that's what I thought too. But um, like I, I, like I was told that you maybe don't respect the religion. And I, I told them that that was not the case. I respect them. I just don't respect the view they have exactly. towards Jesus. And I couldn't be, I, I'm not going to be led to a different Jesus because we were born in the Bible about that. So what you're going to have to do, your husband's okay with you, but has he denounced the teachings of Joe's witnesses or does he still think they're right? Even though, He's okay with you not believing. Um, I believe that we both believe the same thing just because I had him uh, read the Bible with me and refutes a lot of their teachings. He agrees with me that there's parts that that doesn't make sense to him either. Um, so he's going to yeah. be gone soon, but his family shows witnesses, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that yeah, he's going to get this mm -hmm. if, if he comes to the point where he agrees that Trinity's true, they're going to disfellowship him. And he, this family is going to cut off ties with him. But my question before I get to it, because if you want me to then show you how the most effective way, I mm -hmm. can do that. But it doesn't mean it's going to convince anyone. But I'm just show, still, Lord willing, help you. But when you married him, he was a Jehovah Witness raised there, even though he may not have been practicing. What were you? Um, before that, I actually went to um, a congregation back in my country. Before that, I was Pentecostal. That that's okay. What so you went to Pentecostal church, but what congregation? So back home, you then went to Joe Witness Kingdom Hall. Yes. I so see. I used to live in Puerto Rico before. That's my home, and I started. Yeah, you don't even look Puerto Rican. That's where my around. Yeah, I started Pentecostal there, and I was invited to the congregation. I moved here to Minnesota, and I met him, and I was invited to the Kingdom Hall. I went a couple times. But like I told you, it just didn't make sense to me. By reading the Bible and seeing their teachings, it didn't match what they were. Okay, so when you left Pentecostalism and went to the congregation, at, and at first, you thought it was right? Yes, I did thought it was right at first. That's right. Yeah, they I got just want to understand it. how he ended up marrying you, because he <clears> was a lapsed Jehovah Witness and didn't care. Mm -hmm. Because if he's a devoted Jehovah Witness, he can only marry someone who's a devoted Jehovah Witness. Mm -hmm. So... When you and him got together and you got married, is it because he saw you were interested in Joe's witnesses or he was just a lapsed Joe's witness, didn't care what you were? Yeah, he didn't really, didn't care. Okay, so then he's not, all right. So it's not so much him, he doesn't really care. It's not really religious, it's the parents. Right. All right, but now with all that in the background, glory to God, he saved you, opened your eyes. You didn't fall for it. You could see their Jesus is not the real Jesus. Praise the Holy Spirit for protecting you. May he bring Joe's witnesses out. Now, obviously, you want to make an impact where he doesn't lose his family because for those who don't know, if a Jehovah Witness de de deems you an apostate, they disfellowship you. You're excommunicated. They use the word disfellowship. Mm -hmm. They will not talk to you. They will not associate with you. They will not yeah, they haven't talked to me do life with you. So her husband's on the verge of being disfellowship. Once that happens, his family will never talk to him. Mm -hmm. So that's... Is that what you're trying to avoid as well, or? Um, what I'm trying to um, at least do here is for me and my my husband to be on the same page at this point. I don't. Um, I'm concerned that maybe they're going to be able to pull him in well, to those teachings. So I'm trying to gather as much um, information I can get. So now it's a battle for your marriage because though he sees there's some wrong things, you're afraid that because they'll be able to convince him because they'll probably have answers to what you're saying and you may not be able to convince them. So that somehow will put a wedge in your marriage. Is that it? Mm, well, it did a little bit. Already um, did? 
uh since the last uh, memorial oh. that happened yes because oh, that's when my that's when i started to um like come out like freely more freely and say that i was not um that we couldn't do this basically but i thought he didn't mind you told me so he does mind well he was okay with attending to the meeting to the uh, uh memorial but i wasn't so that's when um so that has affected your marriage. I got to be clear. I don't understand because I. I um, not really. It's like you said, Sam. He doesn't really care about being in um with them or with them. He doesn't want to be a Jehovah Witness. A, a witness. Oh, so then. But, so then, what are you afraid they're going to put a wedge? Because now you confuse the hell out of me, and I don't understand. <laughs> I'm sorry. First you're telling me um, a wedge, and you're afraid you're going to lose him, but then you're telling me. Oh, he doesn't care about so then you're not gonna lose him. Um it's like the family is not um it, it's against like me taking him to being a Christian. That's what like, but he happening. doesn't care. So how is they putting a wedge between you and him? That's where I'm getting confused now. First you're telling me they're putting a wedge between you and him, but now you're telling me he doesn't care, he doesn't okay. So then how are they putting a wedge between the two of you? Um, just because they keep trying to push uh, push us to go to the meetings and to be more involved with them. And just because it's his family, um, he may feel like he has to. But he's told you? Yeah, he has told me. Okay, anyway, like, I'm about to hang myself and my shoes and sister. Stuck for the <laughs> Muhammad Rajim. Oh, 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 I can't understand this. Okay. We're going to rewind the script. We're going to start from the start, okay? Make it clear for me. Mm -hmm. Imagine I'm like Protestant believer. I'm mentally challenged. <laughs> I'm sorry. I haven't talked to anyone about this. Just those couple. No, it's okay. But I still don't understand it. Are you going to lose him? Or does he not care about Joe's witnesses no matter what they say? Um, I think I'm just, I'm going to put it like this. If, um, for example, um, like I was told last time that I don't respect his religion uh, and he was he was uh, present, and um, he was present when I was yeah when I was told that, um, and he didn't really back up back me up just because oh. it's like if you hold details. Listen, I'm not a prophet. I don't know what's going on. So if you're not telling me stuff, you're hiding stuff. You're doing yourself. No, I'm stuff. not hiding. I just no, saying that, saying. you didn't uh, tell me that part. Hey, if you disrespect our religion, what did they say? Um, well, they're saying that I didn't respect the religion uh, okay. or his beliefs, and I told him um, to say something that we've been reading, but he didn't really. Uh, well, he say went anything. silent. Yes. Okay. Here's what I want to tell you: what your problem is. You want me to go deep because yeah, go ahead. Concerned. Go ahead. You have a husband who's not bold to take his stand for anything. He just wants to appease everyone. Mm-hmm. It's not that he has any conviction. He doesn't care. He is weak. I'm just letting you know by what you're telling me. I'm, mm -hmm. I don't know him. He's weak. In other words, he'll go along with you to make you happy, but he'll go along with them, make him happy. And he doesn't want drama, so he remains silent. Now tell me how wrong I am. No, I don't think you're wrong. <laughs> so your, your husband is wishy-washy. He's the problem, not the family. He has no conviction. For anything to take a stand for anything so the problem is not the family or you they're passionate you're passionate he's not he don't care so uh, this is where i'm getting confused with you oh yeah, yeah i see mm -hmm. with them oh yeah 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 and then when you're both together zip he sips there like a little child mm -hmm. so he doesn't care he doesn't care you're joe witness or not he just wants all of you to be happy because he's a crowd pleaser he's an appeaser yeah. Now, let me tell you what that means. I'm not a prophet or a counselor. All I'm doing is I'm going by what you tell me. I'm not God. I don't see. That tells me because he's not bold and he doesn't take a stand for his conviction, you already have problems in your marriage. And from what I gather, again, I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. You're the leader in the relationship and you're the one who's strong and dominant. Now, tell me how wrong I am. Well, I believe that he's a leader. That's why well, you know, I... You know, <laughs> practice and saying, but if I looked at your lives 
I don't care what you say. You go by the deeds. You'll know them by their fruits. Mm -hmm. so if I see who's the bold one and the leader, I'm seeing it's you, not him. Yeah. I know you respect him as the leader. I'm not saying anything because you're trying to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. That's a given. I'm not saying you're in sin. It doesn't matter what someone says. You see them by their deeds. From what I'm hearing, in fact, here, you're the one taking initiative. If I were to look, oh, she's the one that leads. She's the one who's forceful. She's the one who's passionate. This guy just wants everyone to get along. Like a 60s hippies. Let's all get along, bro. It's all about love. It's all about love. <laughs> all right. So how wrong am I? No, you don't sound wrong. Um... So that's it. So the problem is with your husband's indecisiveness. So uh, that's something he's got to be convicted. And that comes from the spirit. Once he's convicted, once he's convicted, and once he falls in love with Jesus, then he's going to be bold for Jesus like you and take a stand. But until there, he doesn't care about religion. Religion to him is nothing. He doesn't have any belief. He doesn't care because to him it's not serious. Because if he really believed Jesus and he really believed in God and he really believed in judgment, he would be taken aside. But he doesn't care. Because in his mind, what's the big deal, you know? Oh, it's a big deal because you have a wrong Jesus. You're going to hell, buddy. He doesn't see that. So you're so focused maybe on the, the parents. You need to be focused on him that he gets on fire. Because once he's on fire, it's going to be like you. No, 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 no. And and that's what I do. I have him read the Bible like um we read through like Psalms 1. Like I was explaining him and I'm like, this is why um this is why we believe in a trinity. It's just the word what to do. Say? Um, and he agrees. He agrees that um, uh, he agrees to you. But can he say to them? Yeah, to the, yeah, to the Bible. I like went when he read. He read with me the Psalm 102, 25 and Hebrews one ten. And he's like, "What well, makes sense?" It's he's taking okay, the same but, title. Uh, he said it makes sense to you. Like to no, like basically to um against their beliefs. So yeah, I, I know, tell him, you know that they believe matter. something else. I ask him, like you know, they believe something else. And so he you're, not listening anything. Anything. you're not listening. You're not listening. I don't care what he says to you. Does he say it to them? No, Seth? he doesn't tell. He doesn't tell to them. <laughs> yeah, because he's a coward. That's my point. See, that's I know what you're telling me. He's appeasing you. He's not a man of conviction. You understand? He's playing you, right? I'm not trying to cause a wedge. God have mercy. You got to stay with your husband till death. You cannot leave him. You cannot cheat on him. You got to love the Lord. No, he's, he's he's playing with your mind. Oh yeah, I see it, sweetie. Just to appease you. He's a coward. He's not a man of conviction. You understand that, right? You yeah. got to be honest. You got to be honest. I know you love him, but you got to be realistic. The man's a coward. He's an appeaser. He'll say what you want to hear to get you off his back and not cause drama. But in front of them, he's going to say what they want to hear. That's mm -hmm. why you're upset at the fact that when he was there and had a chance just to say what he told you, he didn't say nothing, did he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he's a coward. The problem is with your husband. Do you understand? Yes, I do. Um, I did uh, meet up with the cop. The I don't know if he's an elder, but um, the Jehovah Witnesses um, couple. I met them by myself, like I was alone. Um, yeah, the time where, when see? I was that calling was... a hmm? when I was calling a past, it was a different occasion, and he was there. But I um, was your yeah. husband there when they were drilling you? Um, no, with when I met with the uh, couple, he wasn't there. Mm -mm. Gee, how convenient. He leaves you in the lion's den. Yeah. <laughs> no, sister, I want you to see it. Open your eyes. I know you No, I, I do. Yes. Um, it was a very not, important moment. But for me, that moment was very important for myself because then I am planting the seed for these people. And notice, and the things that matter, he wasn't there. Now, God forbid, let me remind you, you have to stay with your husband. You have to be on your husband. You cannot leave him. You cannot cheat on him. God forbid you stay holy because your commitment to the Lord. But mm -hmm. you see, when those battles that mean the most to you, he's not there for you. So you have a coward. And let me tell you what the scripture says about cowards. Okay. So you got to work on your husband more so than working on someone else. All right. Uh, not, I don't know, it's on the others, his family members. Let me show you what the Bible says about cowards who have no conviction because they want to be crowd pleasers. Your husband is a coward. I don't mean to hurt you. I know he'll get obsessed, but I got to call a spade a spade. <laughs> and here you're telling me when you were confronted, and that's the time when you wanted him there, he wasn't there. He's not there for you for your battles. He's leaving you to fight for your own here. 
Well, I was there for Jesus. Like I yeah, told myself, I was there more for Jesus and to the glory friend. to God. Who said you're not there for Jesus? But where is He to mm -hmm. be there to give you that support? But anyway, God will deal with Him. But mm -hmm. here's what Revelation 21 verse 8 says. Revelation 21 verse 8 says. But as for the the cowards and those without faith, like your husband. And those who are disguised, disgusting in their filth and murderers and the sexually immoral, those practicing spiritism and idolaters and all the liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur. This means a second death. He's a coward and he doesn't believe. He doesn't care. So you need to pray for your husband because he's on his way to hell. Mm -hmm. He's on his way to hell. Now, I can help you whatever you want, way you want. Now, what do you want me to do for you when it comes to dealing with them? What questions do you want me to answer? Because I don't know. Are you wanting to show them the Trinity? Is that it? Um, I wanted more. And I've seen most of your videos. Um, I see them at work. So it's kind of hard to take notes when I'm at work yeah. and listening. But then um, about the deity of Christ. I already touched bases with them with um, Psalms 102 and Hebrews 110. Is that I, all you did? I think I'm pretty sure it's been a while since I met with them. I did brought my book with me and I had a couple more. But if there was more that I could learn. Oh, there's too many. Too many yeah, things you can show them. <laughs> so do you want me to begin with showing them again? Christ is Yahweh? Yes. Is okay, we can do that. There's too many. So I'll give you the most hard hitting ones. But you got to deal with. There are three main proof texts. They have three texts they use to show that Jesus is a creature. Did they bring them up mm -hmm. against you? Did they use them against you? Um, they actually didn't use a lot of the Bible. There was oh. like, like honestly, they didn't really use the Bible that much. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the most powerful, hard-hitting ones. But then, remember, you're going to ask them as in the questions to deal with it. Right. But then when they come back with their text, they're going to give you three verses to try to show you Jesus is created. We can deal with that another time. I will, because I want to give you, because you're going to meet them. So I want to give you what you're going to show them. Mm -hmm. That's most effective, Lord. But remember, that doesn't mean they're going to see. Doesn't mean they're going to see. Okay. But just means, but you're doing your part. The ones they're going to quote are these. I'll deal with them next time around. But here, they're okay. going to give you Proverbs 8.22. They're going to say, this is Jesus speaking. Proverbs 8.22. Jesus, because Jesus is wisdom. He personifies wisdom. So they'll say here in Proverbs 8, 22, look what Jesus is. That's what they're going to tell you. Mm -hmm. Jehovah produced me as the beginning of his way. The mm -hmm. earliest of his achievements long ago. Now, I've done many articles and sessions on it. But Lord willing, if you come back again, mm -hmm. we'll go through this mm -hmm. next time. But I just want you to be ready. They're going to mention this. And you're going to say, oh, he said it. It's not because I'm a genius. It's because I read their literature. So that's one. Mm -hmm. What did it say? If you missed it. They're going to say, see, it said, Jehovah produced me. Produced, like created. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see? Oh, that's Jesus speaking wisdom. All right, that's one. The second one they're going to quote. Now, again, I have dozens of articles and sessions on this, but I'll do it again for you. Okay. When we cross that bridge, because now I'm going to show you verses you can use on the spirit and on Jesus. All right, so Colossians 1 is the other one they use. These are the three ones they use, guys, every one of them without a fail. Colossians 1.15, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Ah, mm -hmm. you see? The firstborn. That's the second one. Now, now we come back to the third one. The third one they're going to use, and none of them teach what they claim, is Revelation 3.14. Revelation 3.14. Right here. Revelation 3.14. To the angel of the congregation, allow it to see right. These are the things that the amen says, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation by God. See, God began creation by mm -hmm. creating Christ first. He began with Christ, created him. See, that's what they're, these are the three they use, none of which say what they claim. Mm -hmm. But these are the three. Let me know, Lord willing, when you want to discuss. And for those of you, I have articles, sessions on it. Don't freak out. We'll go through this. Anytime this week upcoming, but now I'm going to give you the hardest hitting ones. But you got to know how to present them and you got to be patient and ask questions. Okay. All right. No, mm -hmm. Crystal Sinesti here. Crystal Sinesti thinks this session is for him. See? So mm -hmm. here we have the title, Ex Jehovah Witness. I'm trying to help her. Crystal Sinesti, he thinks it's his world. He's a squirrel. So he wants me to now answer his question. Now, Crystal, so you know you got to get out of here now, right? Even though you're regular. 
for that this is now get him out of here guys block him i don't want him back now okay now now coming back don't worry about it russell focus let's come back to the hardest hitting passages you ready mm -hmm. all right here they go so use their translations because you got to know how to use their how not to you then ask them the following question you go to john 5 ready john 5 okay and this is i've done said but i'm going to walk you through this. so use their bible mm -hmm. but you got to get them to see your point john 5 22. you just want to shock them you don't know what's going to go in their mind you just do your part leave it be so you mm -hmm. go to john 5 22. for the father judges no, no one at all but he has entrusted all the judging to the son so who's going to come and do all the judging his son jesus so not the father, right? Mm -mm. Make sure they see it because they're not going to be able to run. I promise you they won't. You're going to shock their system. That's what you want to do. So then you say, okay, that's John 5.22. Then you take them to Matthew. Matthew 16. We're going to go to Matthew 16.27. I'm using their Bible, right? Mm -hmm. So, hey, I'm using your Bible, guys. Matthew 16.27. Now watch who's coming again. Matthew 16.27. For the Son of Man, that's Jesus, they know it, is to come in the glory of his Father. His Father, right? Son of Man is coming in the glory of who? His Father. So that's Jesus, Son of God, right? Mm -hmm. With his angels. And then he, Jesus, Son of Man, will repay each one according to his behavior. So you say, can we admit, is Jesus the Son of God, who's the Son of Man? He's coming mm -hmm. to repay people according to their mm -hmm. deeds. They're going to have to say yes. And can we admit that Jesus said the Father judges no one at all, so the Son's going to do it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Ah, oh, sorry. Okay. okay, good. We're going to go here. We're going to Revelation 22. Revelation, last chapter. Revelation 22. Last chapter. And verse 20. So you get them to say, all right. The one who bears witness of these things says, yes, I am coming quickly. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. So who's coming? Jesus. Because why? When the one speaking says, I'm coming quickly, then John says, Amen, come Lord Jesus. So Jesus is saying, mm -hmm. I'm coming quickly, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the Revelation 22, 20, you're going to go up to verse 12. Okay, you say, okay. Look, I'm coming quickly. Who was that according to Revelation 22, 20? I'm Jesus. And the reward I give is with me to repay each one according to his work. Remember Matthew 16, 27? Jesus says the Son of Man will come in the glorious Father to repay mm -hmm. everyone according to their work. Yes. Remember that? Mm hmm And here the one says, I'm coming quickly, says, I'm coming quickly to do what? The word I give is with me to repay each one according to his work. So who's coming to judge and repay you? I'm Jesus. Because what did John 5, 22 say? Does the Father come to judge anyone? No. All right. So they can't deny Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. Say, so, oh, but we got problems. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and last, the beginning and the end. Game mm -hmm. over. Right. Wait. Jesus said, I'm the Alpha and Omega, beginning and the, the first and last, beginning and end. It's things that only Jehovah says because mm -hmm. when we Titles. go to yeah. Revelation 21, uh oh, Jehovah Witness. Revelation 21, we go here. <laughs> Where you go? And he said to me, They have come to pass, I'm the Alpha and Omega. The beginning, the end. Uh oh. To one, anyone thirsting, I will give from the spring of the water of life for you. Anyone conquering will inherit these things, and I will be his God, and he'll be my son. So here they'll say, Yeah, the Father is Jehovah. We know that. We agree. Mm -hmm. And we know it's the Father speaking because he says, I'll be his God, and he'll be my son, right? Mm -hmm. And we know because he's Almighty without beginning, he can be Alpha and Omega at the beginning, and end, right? Right. But then how can Jesus say, I too am Alpha and Omega, first class, beginning, and end, if he's a creature? Right. Now you're going to see them come up with a thought. No, but it's not. Uh, yeah, all right. No, dude. We've already established. Yeah. It's got, so they're, they're not going to accept it, but you're going to now rock them. You see it? I see it. I am coming quickly. In case they missed it. Hold on. Let's go to the end of the chapter. Yes, I am coming quickly, verse 20. Amen, come Lord mm -hmm. Jesus. Yes. Yeah. And then he says, and the reward I give is with me to repay each one according to his work. But hold on. Matthew 16, 27, Jesus says that. 
in those exact words here, Matthew 16, 27. Watch here. Matthew 16, 27. For the Son of Man is come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will repay each one according to his behavior. Can't get around it. That's Jesus speaking, right? It is. Mm -hmm. But then Jesus who says, and the Lord I gives with me to repay each one according to his work, right? I'm the Alpha and Omega, the first and last, the beginning and end. That means he's uncreated. He's been there from the beginning. He'll be there till the end. Yeah, How? I I see. The creature. Yeah. Hmm. Making sense to you, right? It, it does to me, yes. But that doesn't mean it's going to make sense to you. But don't worry. You be patient. Mm -hmm. Right? I was being more agreeable to their things than like, rebuking them. Because in the beginning, I was told that they don't do debating. So I... That's Actually, why you can't debate. That's yeah. why you ask questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You debate, they're going to say you're hot headed. They're going to avoid you. Yep. You get it now? I do. Okay. Now, let me make it more clear. You're going to see how shocking it gets. Okay. So, right here, we saw, we saw that Jesus says, and the reward I give is with me to repay each one according to his work, right? Mm -hmm. He says it here. So, that's Jesus. And again, how do we know Jesus? Because in Matthew 16, 27, watch here. What does he say? For the Son of Man is to come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will repay each one according to his behavior. So Jesus is the one who's going to come and repay accordingly, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we got another problem. Watch here. You want to see the other problem? <laughs> Isaiah 40, verse 10. Watch the language. Isaiah 40, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Look, the sovereign Lord Jehovah will come with power. Who's coming? Jehovah. Not a creature, right? Will come with mm -hmm. power. And his arm will rule for him. Look, his reward is with him. Oh, and the wage he pays is before him. Yeah, I even get surprised by reading these things. Good. And That's strengthening I... your faith. Mm -hmm. right. So... Who's coming here in this verse? Jehovah. And who's going to bring his reward to repay you? Oh, um, Jehovah. But in Matthew 16, 27, Jesus says, it's me. Mm -hmm. Matthew 16, 27, mm -hmm. right here. For the Son of Man is to come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he'll repay each one according to his behavior, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. So Jesus claimed to be Alpha and Omega, first and the last, beginning and the end, he says, I'm the one coming with my reward to pay each one of you according to your deeds. Father judges no one. I do all the judging. Old Testament says Jehovah God is coming and he will pay people, right, for what they've earned. And we're told that the Father is the Alpha and Omega beginning and the end. Mm -hmm. And yet Jesus is not the Father. We know that. We but know that. he's claiming to be just as much God as the Father is, right? Mm-hmm. That's why we're Trinitarian. So, so are you saying Jesus Father? No, I'm not saying that. Right. I'm saying that's, yeah. he's the Son who's one with the Father and equal to him in nature. That's all I'm saying. Now I think so that's the hardest part for I think that's the hardest part for them to understand. Um, they're trying to say that we made up that word Trini the Trinity, oh, and I'm like it's just it's okay. Yes. Say don't you use words and not in the Bible to express what's in the Bible? Yeah, mm -hmm. and it says in the Bible that you should not add words to the Bible, otherwise you will be oh, up that you're a liar. See? They're going to say, oh, see, you're adding words to the Bible. You're setting yourself up. No, the adding words to the Bible doesn't mean you can't use words that not in the Bible. It means don't twist the meaning of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Make it say something it doesn't say or deny something it does. Mm -hmm. Because if adding words means I can't use words not found in the Bible, well, why are you speaking English? The Bible's in Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. Mm. No, adding words means do not change the meaning by making the Bible say something that's not there or do not deny what the Bible does say. Because if you take it the way you did, why are you speaking English? Because it's written in Greek. So when you're using now words not found in the original language, you're adding. So, you know, that's wrong. Don't use that mm. argument. Okay. Because even with your logic, you just refuted the Trinity. The Trinity is not in the Bible, the word. Why using the word? Right. You don't want to do that to yourself, right? Right. So avoid these mistakes, right? Now, if they tell you, well, how can Jesus be Jehovah? The Father's Jehovah. What are they assuming? 
I'm going to you repeat that. What happened? You got distracted, sister? <laughs> Who distracted you? <laughs> what was your mind? What were you thinking? My my, my cat was just going by my leg. Sorry, oh, I got two cats. Oh, I got two cats. <laughs> okay, now. Their argument is, mm -hmm. how can Jesus be Jehovah when the Father is Jehovah? Right? Right. What are they assuming with that argument? They're assuming you can't have more than one person who has the same name, right? Mm-hmm. Because if the Father is Jehovah, then Jesus can't be Jehovah because that means he's the Father, right? Right. Okay, now you know why that's a dumb argument. Do you know why? Yeah, because Jesus is not Jehovah the Father. Yeah, but is he Jehovah though? Is he Jehovah? Yes. But you just said he's not Jehovah the Father. So <laughs> can Jesus be Jehovah and the Father be Jehovah and they're not the same person? Can Jesus be Jehovah and the Father be Jehovah without being the same person? They can be, yes, without being the exactly. same person. But they'll tell you, no, it can't be. If the Father Jehovah, Jesus can't be Jehovah. Now, the reason why that's a silly mm -hmm. argument, here's why. Even within families, families, let's not even use the Bible for a minute, which I will. Can a father who's named Robert have a son named Robert? Yes. How many parents do you know whose fathers named their children after them? A lot. Robert mm -hmm. Sr., Robert Jr. Mm -hmm. The second, the third. Yeah. Oh, so you mean, <laughs> wait, we have now three different persons, all called Robert, let's say, Shamoon. Mm -hmm. In fact, you know what's the best example of this? You know what's the best example of this? Mm -hmm. George Foreman. He named several of his sons George. Mm -hmm. They're all George Foreman. Here, let me show it to you. So I'll even give you examples. You might have showed that's a dumb argument. Let me see if my cat wants to come in. See? Oh, he doesn't want to come in yet. Okay, here, let me show you. I'm going to show you George Foreman. You ready? Ready. All right, watch here. We're going to go on Google. Sheikh Google, the God, greatest scholar <laughs> ever known. Why are you laughing at Sheikh Google, sister? No, 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 laughing. You're just that, laughing. That, no, not at that. <laughs> okay, George Foreman son's name george watch here how many george george how many how oh, many George? they're all george foreman right yes <laughs> okay why did george foreman name his five sons george five george jr is junior george the third is monk george fourth is big wheel george fifth is reed george sixth mm -hmm. is little joey so five sons named george foreman and when you add him that's six George Foremans. What? So yes, you can have more than one person who has the same name without being the same person. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, I agree. And why did, it, why did this come up? Hold on, I'm going to George. Okay, right here. Let me see, George. George, George, George of the jungle, watch out for that tree. Blah, 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 blah. Right? How many kids George Foreman has? George Foreman has 10 kids. Man, this guy is very busy, huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. No TV, I guess, in his house. Okay. His daughters are Natalie Foreman, Leola Foreman, Georgetta Foreman. He's even got a female George. Oh, Rita God. George Foreman, middle name George. Now his sons. So you have George Jr., George the Third, George Foreman the Fourth, George Foreman the Fifth, and George Foreman the Sixth. What the heck dude so that's not true you can have more than one person who has the same name without being mm -hmm. the same person right right now can i give you a biblical example for that yeah now this is in the king james because so the hebrew says adam but in english they translate it i'm gonna show it to you so you go to here this is their jw.org you know how to find it yeah i have their app <laughs> so then you go to their online bible right Mm -hmm. Then you go down to their King James. So they make available the King James, right? Yeah. Right there. So you click on it, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Now watch here. I'm going to let him play it for you. Je Genesis 5, verse 1 and 2. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. All right. Now watch here. Oh, they don't have it to play. This one they don't have. 
Now watch, sister, tell me. Male and female, Adam and Eve, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, watch here. Male and female, Adam and Eve. Not Adam and Steve, right? It's not Adam right. and Steve, right? Mm -mm, no. <laughs> it's, not, it's not Eve and Layla. Male and female. Okay. What are their names? This is the book of the generations of Adam. And the day that God created that man, in the likeness of God made mm -hmm. he him. Now notice, male and female created he them, right? Mm -hmm. uh, who did he create? Male and female, right? Yeah, them. Mm -hmm. And blessed them and called their name what? Adam. Wait, the female's name Adam too? Yes. How can you have both of them being Adam? The male and the female. The female's not the male. The male's not the female. They're not the same person, but they're both called Adam. How is that part? How is that possible? No, well, they're sharing the same name, but not the same person. Oh, so here we just prove that the male and female, they're different persons and physical beings, different genders, but both can be Adam. Because why? Because they have the same nature. Because Adam refers to their nature, humanity, mankind. Mankind, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, so why can't Jesus be Jehovah and the Father be Jehovah? And still they're not the same person because they're both the same true God, not the same person. Mm -hmm. yeah, just... So that's what you're going to show them. See, say, wait, hold on. If people can have the same name without being the same person, why can't Jesus be Jehovah like the Father without being the Father? Yeah, that'll be a good question. Yeah, you can't debate. And they're, well, oh, so, well, hold on, I just showed it to you. And then you leave it be. Now, mm -hmm. let's show other arguments that are hard hitting. You tried the Hebrews one, didn't sink in, that's fine. So we're not going to go mm -hmm. to Hebrews one. All right. You tried that, you said it didn't click, right? No, it didn't click. Okay, no, no, no. I read it slowly and it just didn't work. Yeah, that's fine. Remember, you don't know what they're going to be thinking alone. You don't know what's running in their head, right? They right. may not click, mm -hmm. but you don't know. You Maybe one of them said, wow, wait, hold on. It is quoting Psalm about Jesus. Hmm. That's what you want to do, get the ball rolling, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's, so. that's the idea. Now, here's another one you're going to use. I'm going to give you a few for Jesus and some for the Spirit, and you can come back for more. Okay. Revelation 5. Ready? Ready. These are ones I use. Now, obviously, they get rocked, and then they want to argue. So, okay, I'm out of here. I tell them. Why? Because I'm not here to debate with you. I turn it against mm -hmm. them. I don't debate. I'm out of here. Bye. So I leave yeah, them. Yeah, I've seen you doing that. <laughs> huh? What is it? I've seen you doing that. When am I work? <laughs> you just don't debate them. Yeah, yeah. When, yeah, I, just, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the streets, when I do, and I see the argument, okay, I'm out of here. Bye. Mm-hmm. So I turn it against them, make them feel silly. I'm not <laughs> arguing with you, man. You don't, it says what it says. You don't see it. I'm out of here. I can't. Yeah. Once you made your point, like there's no yeah. reason to keep talking to them, honestly. Yeah. Now watch here. Watch here. You emphasize. Say, look, follow me. I heard every creature. Does it say some creature? No. Every. In heaven, on earth, underneath the earth, on the sea, and all the things in them. Is John clear? He means every creature in all of creation? Mm-hmm. All creature. Right? Right. You, you can't make sure they see it. Every creature. And then if case you don't get it, in heaven, on earth, beneath the earth, on the sea, and then all things mm -hmm. in them. Okay. Now, Jesus is a creature, right? Right. According, According to, to that. <laughs> He's a creature in heaven, right? Right. So according to them. So if it says every creature in heaven, that means if Jesus is a creature, that means this includes him, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, but we have a problem. Saying to the one sitting on the throne and to the Lamb, He's not part of them. No, it just no, it's not. Yeah. He's not part of them. How can Jesus be a creature if every created thing in all of creation, in heaven, on earth, beneath the earth, every creature in all of creation is separate from Jesus, and Jesus is on the side of God the Father? It wouldn't make sense on there. Point of view, honestly. But that's what you want to get them saying. Then say, since you don't worship Jesus the way you worship the Father, why is every creature in all of creation giving Jesus the same worship the Father receives? Because notice, to the one sitting on the throne and to the Lamb be the blessing and the honor and the glory and the might forever and ever. How come you don't worship Jesus the way all creation does? Mm -hmm. 
They're giving him the same blessing, honor, glory, and might for the same duration, forever and ever, that the Father receives. Why? Mm -hmm. Why? They don't have an answer. Yeah. No, they don't. That's okay. You're doing your part, right? To educate and convict. Right. Okay. So that's all you want to do? All right. So that's one. my second favorite. The other one I use is Hebrews 1, but you already use it. Now, we're going to show a few more. Mm -hmm. I got too many, but you can't overwhelm them. You're going to take it slowly. And then when they respond, you come back and I'll help you. The Lord willing. But yeah. take it slowly. Don't overwhelm them. Bombard them. Now, here's what I, I'm going to show you. They don't pray to Jesus. They don't believe in praying to Jesus, right? Right. So you're going to say, all right, I got I got some problems here. Okay, Psalm 31.5. Psalm 31.5. You go to Psalm 31.5. So I got some problems, Joe Witness. Psalm 31, verse 5. Now, this is recorded, so you always can go back and watch. That's mm -hmm. why I want to record it, because yeah. others know. Because we have a sister here who has a website, YouTube channel, XJW Laura. Her and her husband left the Joe's Witnesses. They have a YouTube channel. And I want to bring her up an interview. I'm going to make her a mod. So you can go to her channel. Guys, mm -hmm. let me make her a mod. Share the link, sister. So her and her husband witness to Joe's Witnesses. They have a YouTube channel, how to witness to them. So she's a mod now. So mm -hmm. she can share the link. So they're benefiting because now you're helping them by me answering questions. Now they're going to take it and use it. And you guys have my permission, all of you. Take my clips, upload them, translate them, do what you want. It's yours, free. Now, coming back to you. Psalm 31, verse 5. Into your hands I entrust my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Jehovah, the God of truth. Now, this is worship. This is prayer, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Whose hands does he entrust his spirit? To Jehovah. And you say to them, can you entrust your spirit to Jesus? No. Mm-hmm. Can you pray saying. Jesus? No. Here. Okay, so, but now I got a problem. Why? I go to Acts 7, 59. Acts 59. I got a problem, Joe Witness. Houston, we got a problem. Acts 7, 59. You ready? Watch it. Yeah. Acts 7, 59. As they were stoning Stephen, he made this appeal, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Mm. See, the light switch went on with you, huh? Oh, yeah, that's for sure. Saw that? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's praying to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Why? According to them, you can't pray to Jesus, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay, now, let me show you examples of praying to Jehovah that subscribed to Jesus. So then, that was, and you, you'll be able to follow. You can rewind this, but you're writing down. Mm -hmm. so yes, I am writing. <laughs> You go back to Psalm 99 and you read 6 to 8. Psalm 99, 6 to 8. Make sure they catch this. Mm -hmm. Psalm, now, remember, you're trying to do damage. Leave enough seeds and fruits in mind that the Spirit will rock them and not leave them alone. But you're not, you are, you may not see the results. That's okay. Psalm 99, 6 to 8. Watch what I'm going to do with this. Moses and Aaron were among his priests, Jehovah's priests. Samuel was among those calling on his name. They would call to Jehovah, and he would answer them. So whose name did they call on? Uh, Jehovah. And they are priests of who? Of Aaron. <laughs> read, read, read the verse. They were priests of who? Reread read it. It's right there. Read verse 6. Come on. Listen, his, among his priests of Jehovah? You're asking like you're doubting. Come on, sister. Moses and Aaron were among what? How can Aaron be among his own priests? Mm. Moses and Aaron are among who? Whose priests? Jehovah. You got, but you're asking like you're doubting. You got no, be, no, I'm not doubting. Of course not. Be, be confident, girlfriend. <laughs> you Puerto Rican, you Latinos have got hot blood. Come on. Yeah, I'm, I'm Puerto Rican, but I'm not that loud. Uh, <laughs> then you're an exception. You may have European blood in you. Anyway. <laughs> okay, follow the pronoun. Moses and Aaron were among his priests and some among those who called on his name. His name, his priest. It's the same his. Mm -hmm. So whose name do you call on? Jehovah. And whose priest are you then? Jehovah's. That's it. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to get it or they're not going to get it. So 
remember why I'm showing this. You're going to see why. They would call Job and he would answer them. He would speak to them from the pillar cloud. They kept his reminders and the decree that he gave to them. Job, our God, you answer them. Mm -hmm. You are a God who pardoned them, but you punish them for their sinful deeds. So Jehovah answers. He forgives or he punishes. They mm -hmm. call the name of Jehovah and they're priests of Jehovah, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Dum, da, da, dum, dum, dum. Then you say, hold on, I'm confused. First Corinthians 1, verse 2. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2. This is their Bible. I haven't used any other translation but their Bible, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct, I see. First Corinthians 1, verse 2. To the congregation of God that is in Corinth, to you who have been sanctified in you in Christ Jesus, called to be holy ones, together with all those everywhere, everywhere where there are Christians, Everywhere who are calling on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. What do they do? They call on to the name of Jesus Christ. But the Old Testament says you are to call on Jehovah's name alone. Right, but this, this is not the New Testament, Old Testament. Wow. Mm -hmm. Their Lord and ours. That's their translation? Mm. But then you say, how come you don't call on the name of Jesus? Because you don't pray to Jesus. You pray to Father in Jesus' name. But here the Christians are praying to Jesus, calling on the name of Jesus. And every creature in all of creation gives the Lamb, Jesus, the same blessing, glory, power, and might that the Father receives and for the same duration forever and ever. Mm -hmm. How come you're not doing what the first Christians did? Yeah, right? they just condemn. they just condemned the first Christians. That's you better believe it because that means they were worshiping a creature. But now, and again, you take them, say, hold on, let's go to Acts 9. Why was Paul persecuting Christians? Acts 9. The key verses are verse 14 and 21, but we're going to read more than that. Acts 9, verse 14 and 21. But the context of Acts 9 is Saul is going to Damascus to arrest Christians, and he sees a light, and the light blinds him. Here it is. Mm -hmm. So now as he was traveling and getting near Damascus, only a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice mm -hmm. saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Mm -hmm. Who are you, Lord? I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. So who appeared to him? Jesus. Who knocked him down and blinded him by the light? Mm -hmm. Jesus. Knocked, yeah, of course. It's Jesus, the light. Mm -hmm. The light yes. flashed, right? Mm -hmm. okay. So then what does Jesus do? He appears in a vision to one of his disciples, Ananias. Watch here. Mm -hmm. Verse 10. Ananias has a vision. Watch here. There was a disciple named Ananias in the master. And the Lord said to him in a vision. The Lord said to him. Let's see who's talking to him. Mm -hmm. Ananias, he said, here I am, Lord. <clears throat> the Lord said to him, get up, go to the street called straight. Look for a man named Saul from Tarsus at the house of Judas. For he, look, he's praying. Now, look how amazing mm -hmm. Jesus is. Now, not only does he appear in a, to Ananias in a dream, he's even telling him where Saul is and what he's mm -hmm. doing. Right? Yes. And is it coincidence or does God have a sense of humor? He's on a street called Straight. So he's on the Straight Street because now he's found the path to salvation. Mm, yes, I see Straight it. Street because he's now on the Straight Path. I see but it. Mm -hmm. Who's talking to him? Who appeared to Ananias and telling him all this? Jesus. You got it. Now watch. And Ananias doesn't want to go to Paul. Why? And in a vision, look what Jesus says. He has seen a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him. So mm -hmm. they may recover sight. Now, notice how amazing Jesus is. Not only does he appear to Ananias, he's telling Ananias, I showed him you in a vision. I showed him what you look like and you coming to him, mm -hmm. laying hands on him so he can receive sight. So that when Paul's eyes open and he sees Ananias, he's going to have no doubt. Right. Wow, I really did see Jesus, mm -hmm. right? Because how right. could I see this man, Ananias, whom I've never met, in my dream, and he shows up looking exactly the way he did in my dream. Yeah. So to give him supernatural proof, Jesus is real, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, now watch here. Okay, so then Ananias is like afraid. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, about all the harm he did to your holy ones in Jerusalem. Now, mm -hmm. was Paul harming Jews who believed in the God of the Old Testament? Was Paul harming Jews who believed in the God of the Old Testament? Mm, yes, I, I remember. 
Okay, I'm okay. going to throw myself out the window. <laughs> How can Paul harm Jews who believe in the God of the Old Testament when he believes in the God of the Old Testament? <laughs> Sorry, Sam. <laughs> okay, it's all right. Was Paul harming Jews who believe the God of the Old Testament? No. Who was he harming? Mm. I'm ready. <laughs> Don't be scared, man. Come on. Who's he harming? Who's he throwing in jail? Remember, you're on Jeopardy. You're going to run out of time. <laughs> Jameson, I think I'm gonna have to send you back to Florida. You? So you were there? Paul was arming you? I didn't know you were reincarnated, dude. Sister, what's the entire context? No, I said the Christians. I am repeating here your holy ones in Jerusalem. So who was he arming? The Christians. Sorry, I didn't hear you because Jameson needed attention. Uh, uh, the Christians. Yeah, not comments. Jews who believe in the God of the Old Testament, Christians. Why was he arming? Because he thought they were blaspheming for worshiping Jesus, right? Right. But I, I, why I'm emphasizing it? Because notice, the holy ones, the saints in Jerusalem, belong to who? How much harm he has done to who? To, yeah, to the Christians. The word, sister. What's the word he used? How much harm he has done to who? To Jerusalem. So you are in Jerusalem. So you went breaking the sun. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. So he's harming Jerusalem. So Jerusalem got him upset. So he started beating up Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Sister, don't tell me. Oh, I'm about to end the stream and throw myself out the window. Oh, no. What? I'm just agreeing with you. What harm Jerusalem? Jerusalem is a city. Who was he harming? Jesus. <laughs> help me, help me, Butch, Butch. <laughs> it's in front of Rise, Butch. I'm about to end my life. Butch, 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 hold on. <laughs> Butch. Sister, it's in front of you. Who was he harming? But to the holy ones, yes, but they to your holy ones. Yes. Oh my goodness, now you're nervous and scared. Oh, fam, you're scared. Well, because if you don't see it, they're not going to see it because you won't help them to see it. Right. Well, that's why I came to you. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing because now you're not going to forget, <laughs> will you? If you don't see it, they won't see it. That's why I'm asking to see if you see it. There's a reason why I do it because now mm -hmm. you're so scared you'll never forget because you know I'm going to hang myself my shoestrings. You have <laughs> responsibility for my suicide. Don't do that, Sam. Okay. I don't want to wake up at 5 a.m. morning. Okay, so here, who was Paul harming in Jerusalem? To the holy ones. Mm -hmm. Whose holy ones? It's right there. Don't drop the ball. I swear I'm going to end my life. <laughs> who? It's right. Whose holy ones? Read the pronoun for the love of the Quran. And verse. Um, you see, I highlighted it. Yeah, your holy ones in Jerusalem. You said the holy ones. You said the holy. Whose holy ones? I think I'm not understanding the question. Sorry. I asked you whose holy ones. You said the holy ones. Whose holy ones are they? Please don't drop the ball now, sister. You're on a roll. Read it for me, the words in front of you. Read it. Read the words. Mm, okay. Now read out loud. Read the words I've highlighted. It's on the screen. Your holy ones. So who's holy ones? Your holy ones. Yes. And who ha is the your? The father? Jesus. Yes, sister. See now how easy that was? Now you got it. Mm -hmm. Now you understand why I'm saying this, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. How can Jewish believers be the saints of Christ in heaven when it's supposed to be the saints of Jehovah. Mm. You understand why I did what I did so it can sink in, so you can get it? Yes, I understand. So you ask them, 
The saints in the Old Testament, were they saints of a creature in heaven or the saints of Jehovah in heaven? What are they going to tell you? Hmm. What are they going to say? I'm not sure what they're going to say. <laughs> they have to say Jehovah. That's why they're Jehovah's witnesses. Whose holy ones are you? Jehovah's. Mm -hmm. Whose witnesses are you? Jehovah. Yes, you know what they're going to say. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if I ask them, the saints in the Old Testament, whose saints are they? What are they going to say? They're going to say Jehovah's. Mm -hmm. But how can they be the saints of Jesus if Jesus is not Jehovah? Jesus is in heaven. They're mm -hmm. on earth and they're Jews in Jerusalem. How can the saints in Jerusalem be his saints, meaning the only ones that belong to him? Right. You get it? Yes. You understand why you got to catch these points? I do. If I don't, they won't. Exactly. Them as well. And you're going to be stronger for it. So what is Ananias saying? Why do you want me to go to him? I've seen what he's done to your saints in Jerusalem. He's harmed them. He's harmed them because they're your saints. And mm -hmm. because they're your saints, he thinks they're committing blasphemy because he doesn't believe your God. Because Paul as a Jew knew, no Jew can be anyone's saint except God in heaven. So how are you Jews being the saints of Jesus? Jesus ain't God. That's where Paul was wrong. You understand? Mm -hmm. understand? But what else is Paul doing and why? Look what he does in 14. Mm -hmm. And here he has authority from the chief priest to arrest all those calling on your name. Mm -hmm. You see why Paul is angry with them? Right. Because Paul knows the Old Testament and he knows, number one, Jews only call on the name of Jehovah. Why the hell are you Christians, especially you Jews, calling on the name of Jesus? Mm -hmm. Number two. Jews on earth, and Jerusalem especially, are the saints of God in heaven. How are you calling yourselves the saints of Jesus? Hmm. So now my question, Joe Witness, is why are the Jews and those that they convert calling on the name of Jesus if he's not Jehovah? Right. See the problem they have? Yeah, that's a good question, then. But now we continue, because now notice, watch here. And here he has authority from the chief priest to arrest all those calling in your name. But the Lord said to him, go. In other words, don't be afraid. Go, because this man is a chosen vessel. I've chosen him for me to bear my name to the nations, as well as to the kings and the sons of Israel. For I will show him plainly how many things he must suffer for my name. Now, if you ask Paul, do you call on the name of Jehovah? Yeah. Do you call on the name of someone other than Jehovah? No. Are mm -hmm. you willing to die for the name of Jehovah? Yeah. So Paul was already calling on the name of Jehovah and willing to die for the name of Jehovah. So here Jesus is saying, now Paul learned something new. It's my name he calls on. It's my name that he'll preach. And it's my name he'll suffer for because now he knows I am Jehovah. Mm hmm. Because you cannot bear witness to a name of someone other than Jehovah if you're a Jew. But Jesus is saying, he's now going to go and bear witness to my name. He's now going to suffer for my name. Right? He's going to call on my name. Well, if Jesus, if you're not God, you're committing idolatry and you're causing people to commit blasphemy. You see the problem? So what is the message of the New Testament? It's not that now you call on the name of some creature or you're the saints of some creature or you suffer for the name of some creature. No, it's that Jehovah has now become a man and he has a human identity. So now we know Jehovah as Jesus Christ. Right. You get it now? I do get it and it connects. I will just have to, um, and I'm writing this down. And even so that, my next recorded. Well, don't read, don't share it until you get it now. But that's why I keep asking because I don't want to just spoon feed you because if I ask you, it's going to force you to think more deeply, right? Right. So now Ananias goes. So the Lord that appeared to him and spoke to him, watch here. So Ananias went and entered the house and he laid hands on him and said, just like he saw in his vision, Ananias, now he comes. Wow, I saw you. You're here. <clears throat> Saul, brother, 
the Lord Jesus. So the mm -hmm. Lord that was speaking to him was who? And Jesus. Yeah. The Lord said to Ananias, and he tells him who that is. The Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road along which you were coming, has sent me so that you may recover sight and be filled with the Holy, Holy Spirit. Okay, so immediately what looked like scales from fell from his eyes, and he recovered his sight. He then got up, was baptized, and he ate some food and gained strength. Now watch what he does. <clears throat> he stayed for some days with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately in the synagogues he began to preach <clears throat> about Jesus, that this one is the Son of God, so he's not the Father. But now watch what they say. But all those hearing him were astonished and were saying, is this not the man who ravaged, who attacked, who imprisoned, who got killed? Those where? Where were they? In Jerusalem. And why did he have them killed and ravaged? Because in Jerusalem, they called on this name. Mm -hmm. So Jews in Jerusalem were calling on whose name? In the name of Jesus. How? When they know you can't call the name of a creature. Mm, yeah. See mm -hmm. what happened? Yeah, I see him. Wow. So according to Old Testament, you call the name of Jehovah. And yet New Testament, Jews mm -hmm. who know their Old Testament in Jerusalem are calling on the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. They are the saints of Jesus and suffering for his name. Whereas in the Old Testament, you call the name of Jehovah. You are saints of Jehovah, and you suffer for his name. Mm -hmm. What's going on here? Yeah. You see what's happening? So these are some of the most powerful passages to use to demonstrate Jesus Jehovah. And I'm going to give you one more, and we'll give you a few on the Holy Spirit. And if you have more questions, we'll entertain. If not, you just prepare yourself, learn this, and we'll then take it from there. Because I don't want to give you too much, and I don't want to respond to objections until they give them to you, right? Right. Now, here's another problem for these people. Another major problem. Isaiah 45. Remember, they don't believe Jesus is Joe. He's a creature, right? Right. They end up having New Testament contradict the Old Testament and having a creature being exalted to the level of God, which is idolatry. Watch. Watch what happen. Isaiah 45, 21 and 22. Isaiah 45, 21, 22, you make sure you ask them the question so they can see it. Say, okay, let's read this together in your Bible. Make your report. Present your case. Let them consult together in unity. Who foretold this long ago? Who announced what's going to happen in the future? Me, no one else. And declared it from times past. <clears throat> is it not I, Jehovah? There is no other God but me. A righteous God and Savior, there's none beside me. Now, you're going to ask Jehovah's Witnesses. You do believe Jesus is a God in heaven, right? They'll say, yeah, he's mm -hmm. a God, right? Right. Make sure. Now, everyone listen to this argument. If you don't know how to present it this way, you're going to drop the ball and let them get away with murder. So you believe, Jehovah's Witness, Jesus is a God in heaven. Yeah. But he's not the God, Jehovah. No. All right. So what does Jehovah say? He is the only God that saves, the only righteous God, that saves people from sin. A righteous God and a Savior, there's none beside me. Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth. So I mean, all the nations throughout the earth, he wants them all to turn to him. For I'm God and there's no one else. Now what he means is, look, you have no other God besides me. Babylonians, Assyrians, Egyptians, all of you. I'm the only God that can save anyone. There is no other God that can save you. And because I made you all, the earth is mine, I want all of you to be saved, which is why you have to acknowledge me and turn to me so I can save you because vices can't save you. I alone can save you. There is no other God besides me who can save, so turn to me. See what he's telling them? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if I were to ask you, according to the Bible, who alone in heaven is the God who can save? Jehovah. Who alone must you invoke and whose name must you believe in who's in heaven to save you jehovah all right now you're gonna bury them okay. why because in acts 3 peter and john see a paralytic that's right begging and whose name did they invoke to save him mm. when they saw him 
Acts chapter 3, whose name did they invoke? Oh, sorry, I've got to go actually to save him. You're still guessing about it. <laughs> I'm scared, Sam. You're so scary, man. <laughs> you get my husband to beat you up. Here you go. <laughs> Acts 3, 6. However, Peter said, silver and gold I do not possess, but what I do have is what I give you. In the name of who? Jesus Christ. Finish it. The Nazarene. <laughs> walk. And immediately as they lifted him up, he leapt and started walking, right? Mm-hmm. So whose name did they invoke? Uh, Jesus Christ of Nazarene. And they use that to prove that he has the power to heal and save and forgive. Because here, verse 12, when Peter saw this, he said to the people, men of Israel, why are you so amazed at this? And why are you staring at us? Though by personal power or godly devotion, we have made him walk. What? Why are you looking at us as if we had the power mm -hmm. to heal? Or they were so godly that we healed. It wasn't us. Who was it? God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, the God of our forefathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and disowned before Pilate, even though he had decided to release him. Yes, you disowned the holy and righteous one. That's Jesus. And you asked for a man who was a murderer to be given to you, whereas you killed the chief agent of life. Jesus is the chief agent of life. He brings life, but you killed him. But God raised him up from the dead, of which fact we are witnesses. So now, here's the proof that Jesus is alive. If he's dead then his name can't save anyone, right? Right? Right. So how were they able to heal a paralytic, miraculous name of Jesus if Jesus is dead? What does that prove? <laughs> what does that prove? Butch, I'm about to kill myself, Butch. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm just reading, Sam. I'm just reading what you're telling me to yeah, read. If Jesus is dead, his name can't heal anyone, right? Right, yes. He, so he the they God healed the him in the name of Jesus. So what does that prove? That he's the God of the living. Okay, but not only that. Mm -hmm. If he's dead, his name can't save anyone. Since right. his name saved and healed this man, it proves what about Jesus? That he's God. Besides that, sister, what does it prove? He just read it in front of you. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. What is the proof? The proof that he's alive. Oh, yep. That's right. Opa. Hola. <laughs> piri, piri, papa. Como la flor. Yeah. You see how they proved he's alive? Yes. But God mm -hmm. raised him from them, which are witnesses. Why? Because if he's a dead man, his name can't heal anyone. You just saw right. this paralyzed man, and we healed the name of Jesus. Why? Because he ain't dead. He's alive. That's what it proved. Yeah. You see, so you got to get these points. I'm helping you get them, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, you are, Sam, for sure. Good. So, you know, like, man, if I can't handle Sam, ain't no one going to stand before me. Damn. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. If, I can get, if I can get through this, I can get through. Amen. Like, <laughs> what I'm talking about. Opa, hola. All right. Hola. Now watch. And through his name, Jesus' name, and by our faith in his name, Jesus' name, this man whom you see and know has been made strong. The faith that is through him, Jesus, has made this man completely healthy in front of all of you. Now, the Jewish rulers saw the commotion, so they arrested them. Right. And so the next day they interviewed them. Acts 4. Listen to this. Remember what Isaiah 45 says. Jehovah is the only God in heaven who can save anyone on earth. That's why you have to turn to Jehovah to be saved, right? Right. All right, now watch here. So they're going to ask them. Remember, they're Jews. They know the Old Testament. But they know that they invoked the name of Jesus to heal the paralyzed man. And they're like, wait, how can that be possible? Look what they say. So Acts 4, 5, chapter 4, verse 5. We're going to read from 5, 14 and watch. The next day, their rulers, elders, and scribes gathered together in Jerusalem. Along with Annas, the chief priest, Caiaphas, and John, Alexander, and all who were relatives of the chief priests. They stood Peter and John in their midst and began to question them. Now remember, they're Jews. They know the Old Testament. And I'm going to mm -hmm. tell you what answer they expected. By what power and whose name did you do this? Well, if you're a Jew and you believe in the Old Testament, your answer is by the power of Jehovah, the name of Jehovah, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit gives him boldness not to be afraid. Said to them, rulers of the people and elders... If you're being examined today about a good deed to a crippled man, 
and you want to know who made this man well, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene. Wow. He just shocked them. Mm. What are you saying, Peter? You're a Jew and I'm a Jew. And we know that it's the name of Jehovah and his power alone that heals and saves. What are you doing telling us it's the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene? Whom you execute on stake. Now, this is a mistranslation. But whom God raised up from the dead. And you know why he's we know he's alive? If he's dead, his name ain't going to heal anyone. But by his name is healed, showing you he's alive in heaven. By means of him, by means of Jesus, this man stands here healthy in front of me. Now, here's where it really gets shocking. Remember Isaiah 45, 21, 22? Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God and there is no other. No other God in heaven can save you. And I'm only God who can save all of you. So I want all the world to turn to me, right? Right. Mm -hmm. But look what Peter the Jew says. This is the stone that was treated by you builders as of no account. has become the chief cornerstone. Now here is where Jehovah's Witnesses are blasphemous. Why? Furthermore, there is, there is no salvation in anyone else. Uh-oh. You mean to tell me Jesus in heaven. He's the only one who saves? For there is no other name. Uh-oh, it's the name of Jesus, the authority of Jesus alone, and no other name that is given to those under heaven among men by which we must be saved? Mm -hmm. How can Peter say this about Jesus when he knows that the only name and the only one who is in heaven that can save anyone on earth is Jehovah? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But remember, Joe's witnesses think he's a creature, right? That's what they say, yeah. So that means they just said, a creature in heaven, he alone saves, would not Jehovah. And the name of a creature, not the name of Jehovah, is the one that alone can save anyone. It's pretty clear in there to me. Mm -hmm. What is it, Adoniria? Uh, that is pretty clear to me that we um, that is okay to be praying to Jesus Christ because the first thing that I was thought was to be praying to Jehovah and not. Yeah, but you are praying to Jehovah. Jesus is Jehovah. He's not the Father. Right. Yes. Um, it's clear to me. <laughs> it's hard yeah, to explain the point to is, him. How then can Peter say it's Jesus alone in heaven and his name alone in heaven that can save anyone on earth if he's not Jehovah? Yeah. So according to Jehovah's Witnesses, this has to be idolatry and blasphemy. Right. Mm, that's what they were But now, could the Jews refute him? No. Watch. Why? Now, when they saw the outspokenness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated ordinary men, they were astonished, like blown away. They began to realize they had been with Jesus. These are the eyewitnesses of Jesus. So Jesus taught them. But why couldn't they refute them? Because the proof was in front of our eyes. Look at 14. As they were looking at the man who had been cured, standing with them, here's the miracle in front of you. They had nothing to say in answer to this. They couldn't deny it. Mm. They couldn't deny it. They're like, Damn, here's the miracle in front of us. We know he's paralyzed. We saw him at the temple every day. He's now whole and healthy and running and walking. And they're telling us Jesus did it from heaven to prove that Jesus is alive and his name alone saves anyone. But how is that possible when we know from the Old Testament, Jehovah alone saves from heaven and he alone is the name that you invoke to be saved. You understand what you just did? Yeah, I, it's I've never read that before, and um, now I see and understand how much I needed to um hear in order to even go and meet these um Jehovah Witnesses. And there's a lot of information. I have hundreds of our sessions. I've already adjusted, but now let me give you just two verses for the Holy Spirit for now. For now, because I don't think you'll be able to talk about those. But that's going to come up. But let me show you. I'll give you three. You ready for three? Yeah. Okay. Well, you're going to prove they already agree, by the way. The Holy Spirit is not created. They already agree on that. All right? Let me just do this. Right. They agree on that. They'll say the Holy Spirit is not created. He's Jehovah's active force. Mm -hmm. And so Jehovah's always exists with us. So you don't need to prove the Holy Spirit is uncreated. What you're going to need to do is prove the Holy Spirit speaks, can be spoken to, and has emotions. Because they don't think he's a person. Right? Like a per yeah, like a person. Correct. They don't believe that it's a that it's a person. All right. Now let me give you some hard-hitting ones from their Bible, right? All right. 
And then we'll take it more later on because they have objections, but I'm not going to refute them yet until they bring the objection because that will give you more. See, when you don't know an answer, they say, okay, that's a good question. Can I think about it? Then you're going to come and say, here, here's what I found. Now, how did you answer this? That's going to give you more opportunities. So take it as every time they bring up something, can I come back? That's good. Then that means you're going to have a lot more chances to talk to them, right? Yeah. Okay, now, 2 Samuel 23, verses 1 to 3. So I'm going to let them read it for you. The reason, if you're wondering, guys, why I'm not playing audio, because some of the verses are near the end of the chapter. I don't know how to jump to that verse. So that's why. If it's in the beginning, watch. 2 Samuel 23, verses 1 to 3. Chapter 23. These are the last words of David. The word of David, the son of Jesse. And the word of the man who was raised on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob, the pleasant singer of the songs of Israel. The spirit of Jehovah spoke through me. His word was on my tongue. Did you hear it? His word. Who spoke through David? The Holy Spirit. Yeah, but here it says what? Use the, the word. spirit of Jehovah. Mm -hmm. How can the spirit be the one speaking through David if he's not a person? It must it had to be a person. But then David says, His word is on my tongue. The words I'm speaking to you, they're not mine. Who gave David those words? The Spirit of Jehovah. Aha. Uh -huh. So you got it, right? Spirit Jehovah tells David, say this. So mm -hmm. it's his word I'm speaking. So now watch again. Let's go a little earlier. Watch here. Spirit of Jehovah spoke through me. His word was on my tongue. The God of Israel spoke. To me, the rock of Israel said. I'm confused. Okay. Mm -hmm. Verse 2 says it's a spirit of Jehovah speaking, right? Mm -hmm. But in verse 3 says that was the God of Israel speaking. Oh, I see. I see. The God of Israel spoke. Hmm. Hmm. So who spoke? The God of Israel, right? Who's the rock yes. of Israel, right? Mm -hmm. yes. But in verse 2, who's the God of Israel? The spirit of Jehovah. Damn. So he's the spirit of Jehovah, and he can speak. So he's a person, and he's God Almighty. Damn. Wow. What? And that's in their Bible? What? Yeah, like it's in, like, um, I thought for a moment that they actually changed or um, the the word his, or they took they took it as an it instead. And only of a few places but... they do that, but they couldn't do oh, it. Okay. Anymore. Okay. Yeah, Say but what? They, they have it right there saying his word. So, say yeah. what? Okay, now a force doesn't have emotions, right? Yes, okay. Now, watch here though Isaiah 63 10. Are you ready for Isaiah 63 10? I'll put it in. Yes. Right. Yeah. Say what? 63 10. 63 10. Remember, if the spirit has emotions, it's over for them, right? That means he is a person, right? Yes, okay. Isaiah 63 10. But they rebelled and grieved, hurt. Who? The Holy Spirit. His Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. How do you grieve an energy? Mm, you, you can't. You but it says the Holy Spirit was grieved. He was hurt. <laughs> the Holy Spirit was grieved. He was hurt. He and had emotions. God, yeah. God got angry because they hurt his Holy Spirit. And then he turned against them via their enemy. Isaiah 16. This is their translation, right? Yeah. Say what? Two more I'll give you and we're done. You got a lot of information, but you, now you learned it. Acts 5. Oh my, I have a lot to learn, yes. <laughs> but now you learn these and you can, but I'm saying so. But now watch. I want you to pay attention. We're going to let them read it for us. Acts 5, <laughs> verses 1 to 4. The key verses are 3 and 4. Acts 5, verse 1 to 4. The key verses are 3 and 4. Okay. Are you ready? Chapter 5. However... A man named Ananias, together with his wife Sapphira, sold some property. But he secretly held back some of the price with his wife's knowledge, and he brought just a part of it and deposited it at the feet of the apostles. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan emboldened you to lie to the Holy Spirit? Wait, who did they lie to? To the Holy Spirit. How do you lie to how do you lie to an active force? You can't. <laughs> okay, now watch, it's gonna get worse for them. Watch you, let's go a little bit earlier. 
Watch, it's going to get a little worse for them. To lie to the Holy Spirit and secretly hold back some of the price of the field. As long as it remained with you, did it not remain yours? And after it was sold, was it not in your control? Why have you thought up such a deed as this in your heart? You have lied not to men, but to God. Say what? Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Now, God is a personal entity. He has emotions. He has will. He has a mind. He can speak and be spoken to. So you can lie to him, right? Yeah. He's because he's a person, right? Yes. But if the Holy Spirit is an active force, how do you lie to him? He's not an active force. So just like if I lied to God, that makes sense because he's a person, right? Yeah. And then remember who Ananias lied to? To the apostles, right? To the apostles. So they're persons too. That's why you can lie to them, right? Yeah. But then why does it say in the same context, when he lied to the apostles, he not only lied to God, but to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not a person. They're just wrong. <laughs> I mean, you can't tell them that, but... Um... Say what? All right. Now the last one I'll give you. And then there's a lot more, but this is just for now. Acts 10, 19 to 20. Well, no, you know what? Yeah, let me give you two more. Acts 10, 19 to 20. This not, it's not going to be hard, but now this one I can't. I got to go down here. Acts 10, 19 to 20. Watch here. Peter is told to go to Cornelius' house, a Gentile, but he's, he's hesitating, right? Now watch. Mm -hmm. Acts 10, 19 to 20. As Peter was still pondering over the vision, the spirit. Now notice how they dishonor the spirit. They put mm -hmm. a lowercase s, lowercase h. They don't put a capital, but put that aside. The spirit mm -hmm. said. So wait, the spirit is speaking? Yeah. Look, three men are asking for you. So get up, go downstairs and go with them. Who's telling Peter what to do and ordering him? Get up, go downstairs, go with them. The spirit. Telling, oh, so the spirit is Peter's Lord who can boss him around and order him? The spirit. Mm -hmm. So wait, you just told me the spirit can boss Peter around, tell him what to do because the spirit is his Lord? Yeah. But how does the spirit order anyone if he can't speak and he's not a person? It wouldn't be possible. Notice so what else? Though? Not dotting all. Why? Because I have sent them. So the spirit even uses the pronoun I. I sent them to you. So yeah. the spirit is the one who brings people to the right teachers so they can learn the, the message. Right. Okay. It's now, a person. Mm -hmm. You got it. Now the final one. Acts 13, the key verse will be 2 and 4. Acts 13, verse 2 and 4, but we're going to read 1 to 4, right? We're going to let them read it for you. Okay. Now, remember, guys, in their New Testament, they added the word Jehovah 237 times without any warrant because the word Jehovah does not appear in the Greek New Testament. But forget about that focus. Watch here. Chapter 13. Now in Antioch, there were prophets and teachers in the local congregation. Barnabas... Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, who was educated with Herod, the district ruler, and mm -hmm. Saul. As they were ministering to Jehovah. The word Jehovah is not in the Greek New Testament. I can prove it entirely, but forget that. They added it. Okay. As they were ministering to Jehovah, watch here. Say what? As they were ministering to Jehovah and fasting, the Holy Spirit said. Who said? The Holy Spirit. So notice what he says. He commands them again. Watch here. I want you to see this. The Holy Spirit said, Set aside for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Set aside for me to the work I have called them? So he's the Lord of the church who commands the church and orders the church who to send and where to go? Mm -hmm. But I thought the Holy Spirit is not a person. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. now three and four will be done. Watch. And that's it. We're done. Then after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. So these men sent out by the Holy Spirit. By who? By the Holy Spirit. Wow. Man, dude, it sounds like the Holy Spirit is a person who is the God of the church, the Lord of the church, who owns the church and commands the church what to do and who to send. 
All right, let's finish it. Spirit went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed away to Cyprus. That's it. So you got it. I got a lot more, but let me see if I can find an article where I quote the Jehovah's Witness Bible to prove the Holy Spirit is a divine person. So let me just get it for you, and we're done. Now, come back when you interact with them. We'll take it from there, Lord willing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, but take your time. I don't want to give you too much, but you see why I ask you, Nigeria, because then it's going to be second nature, right? Correct. Yes. Do you see that? So let me see if I can find the New World Translation of the Spirit. All right. Let's see. Let me just find this out. I ahead. just been prepared. I just been preparing myself to follow follow up with them because um, I've been looking at their magazines as well because they bring these a lot to yeah. the conversation. Um. And the references that they have through the Bible, but um, well, this, this is I'm going to show you the most effective way. But just stay, be patient, study the material. Now, here's an article I wrote. Look what I wrote, guys. I just share with you in the comments section, and I sent it to you in private. You see in the private chat? If you look in the streamer in the private chat, you'll see I sent you a link. You see it? Oh, I see. Yes. Okay, that's the link. What article? The Joe's Witnesses Bible testifies Holy Spirit is an eternal divine person. I use their Bible to show where the Holy Spirit is said to be a person with emotions and not merely a creature, uh, an active force. I'm sorry. So there you go. Right there. Okay. All right. So Lord willing, take your time. When you have more, you know where to find me. May the Lord use you. Stay strong. May the Spirit put a fire in your husband's heart to be bold. Save them from this cult. And may the Lord use you to save many from this cult. So hope you're blessed, sister. Thank you, Sam. I really appreciate the time that you take for all of us. Anytime. It's my pleasure. Until the Lord calls me home, this is what he's called me to do, and it's an honor. Thank you, Sam. I hope you have a good night. You too, sister. Okay, okay folks, we're done. So if I do this, it's because we're shutting down. Now, guys, pray for me. I need your prayers. Ask God, please, ask God to grant my daughters and I miraculous safety, security, protection, health. I get healthier. I lose the weight. Keep it off eat healthier, stay tight. But most importantly, I get holier and holier and love Jesus more and more because I can't love him enough. God, heal me of lust. I don't succumb to sin. Stay pure until marriage in the power of the Holy Spirit. Never shame the Lord. And that the Lord enables me not to be ensnared to anything, but only be enslaved to the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and the Scriptures. Grant my daughters miraculous safety, security, protection, health, no harm to them. I see them grow up to be in love with the Lord. I die in their arms and pray the Lord for the provision to stay steady and also to pay my debts and may a man of integrity. And God's will be done. May the Lord, if he is pleased and confirm it, if the Lord is will, willing, maybe by next year I'll be a married man to a godly woman who was the Lord. May the Lord bless her and preserve her. His will be done. Love you guys. Lord willing, see you tomorrow. You can take my materials, my articles, they're yours. But understand what you see and hear and read and share it accurately. And don't charge, but pray for that support. Christ is risen. He's alive. He's Jehovah in the flesh. And the one true Jehovah is the Father and the Son who became flesh from the Virgin and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Fill us and seal us to love you and rebuke Satan and to be bold even unto death. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Maranatha. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Take care.